Hello everyone, welcome back to Insect Pests of Crops lecture series. In this lecture, we'll be discussing the pests of ragi, one of the widely grown okay, crop in South India. So if you list the important pests of ragi, which includes pink stem borer, sesamia inference, shoot fly, atherigona species. In fact, there are a number of species again. Ash weevil, Milosera species, Purpulvanidae. Root aphid, Tetraneura nigri abdominalis. If you now look at the, the arid causing pests, damaging pests are gram caterpillar, Illicorpa armigera, one of the widely distributed pests, which usually prefers to attack the economically important part of the crop. Arid caterpillar, Cryptoblevus angustipenella, pyralid, and there are many sporadic and minor pests. Okay. So in fact, if you look at the, the, the pest complex, many of the pests which infest maize or sorghum or many other millets are common in case of ragi. So elsewhere, so maybe in maize or sorghum, we have discussed about its biology, the ecology, management aspects. So more or less, it works good here also. So that's why I'll try to restrict our discussion mainly on the damaging symptoms and then little bit on the management in this lecture. So the first pest, the important pest which occurs in the early stage of the crop is pink stem borer, sesamia inference, which belongs to family Noctuidae. So like in case of sorghum or in case of maize, so typically you will find these small pinholes. So in the, in the leaves actually opens up. So that is the, the very important characteristic damage. Okay, these you now the sesamia inference actually causes. So that is actually when the leaves are still attached to the, the stem, the larvae enters through by making a small hole into the stem. Okay, when the leaves opens up, you'll find those pinholes. Okay, so because of it feeds on the, the stem, so typically you'll find that you know, dead heart symptom. That's because of the cent central shoot actually dries. Okay, very characteristic damage you can see here. So as the larvae actually you know, feeds the inner content of the shoots, so the dead heart occurs. So if damage occurs in the little later stage of the crop, so we'll find that choppy ear it. Okay, so or sometime if it occurs in the still later stage of the crop, so incomplete filling of the grains may occur. Okay, so that is the typical damage caused by this pink stem borer sesamia inference. So if you look at the management of sesamia, during the early stage of the crop, young plants showing symptom of the dead arts may be pulled out and destroyed. So they should be burnt. Okay, so that further you no know, spread is avoided. So in the areas where borers are regularly noticed, so slightly increase the seed rate, which will offset the borer damage by maintaining the optimum field population to get good yield. So we know that increasing the seed rate is common okay, in many of these millets. Okay, that is usually targeted against the shoot fly. But here also, so yes, the crop actually, now the insect actually now usually restrict its damage mainly in the early stage of the crop. So if you increase the seed rate, so whatever the damage, Okay, it occurs on the crop. So such symptomatic plants may be collected and destroyed so that the number of plants per unit area remains same. So usually in case of ragi, we'll go for four to five kg per acre. So you can increase a kg or two kg of you now seeds may be increased so that you now the optimum population can be maintained. So another best way is to actually you now reduce the incidence is managing the crop residue left behind in the field after harvest. So in fact, this SMEA inference diapas during the larval stage. So maybe in the stubble itself, in the leftover harvested stubble, so they may be in the diapasing stage. So you need to completely, okay, so remove the residue, maybe by intercultivation and then, you know, exposing the um, soil before going for sowing. So it eliminates large number of population which are there in the stubble, okay? So wherever possible, these stubbles must be pulled out and not allowed to arbor the pest. Okay, so that means once the crop is over, that stubble has to be mulched. Now that needs to be cultivated and then you know, before going for sowing, so again, the soil may be exposed so that whatever the, the pest, whether it is sesame or any other pest which is harboring in the stubble, which is found in the stubble may be destroyed. The next pest which we have already discussed in case of sorghum or in case of maize is the Atharigona species. Okay, the shoot flies are very problematic pests in most of the millets, including ragi. So the maggots actually bore into the young shoots as a result. So definitely the number of seedlings to the total area actually get reduced. So the typical symptom again, central shoot actually dries up. 
or resulting in dead arts. Okay, so this is the plant showing the dead art symptom. So very common symptom, very problematic you know, pest throughout South India is the Atharigona species. So this fruit fly, again, in the biology we have discussed elsewhere. So fecundity is about 40, usually single laid, single egg is laid on a particular plant. So that means it avoids the you know, computation by laying more number of eggs in a single plant. So that is actually because, so they have the, uh, the adult female has the ability to you know, identify the previously you know, damaged larvae or the larvae which is already existing in a particular plant so that the computation is avoided. So that means the female actually along with the eggs, it also releases epideiotic pheromone or also called spacing pheromone so that computation is avoided. So maggot period is about eight to 10 days. Okay, so what it does actually once it attaches from the hex, it actually you know, crawls through the surface of the leaf, dorsal surface of the leaf, enter the space between the leaf sheath and the you know, central shoot and over there. So as a result, the dead art occurs. Okay, so pupa and the adult, so you know, they are very small fly in fact. Okay, so measures about five to six mm. So if you look at the integrated management of shoot fly, so plant at onset of rainy season, if you delay the, the sowing, okay, so definitely staggered sowing enhances or increases the, the damage rate. So within short period of about 10 to 15 days, within that you know, area, at Taluka level or district level, most of the farmers should go for sowing. So don't go for staggered sowing. Increase the seedling rate, seed rate by 20 to 30%. So one important practice which avoids the shoot fly incidence is actually you know, treating the seeds with imidacloprid or thiomethoxam. So that reduces the, the early incidence. Remove and destroy the dead art infested plants that reduces the further spread. So young you know, fish meal trap impregnated with insecticide about 12 to 15 per acre or 30 per hectare. So apply 5% NSKE at 500 liters per, per hectare. That means 5% NSKE or Nimazal at 1%. Okay, so that needs to be applied so that you no know, shoot fly incidents can be avoided. So one important practice is plow fields soon after harvest again, so that you no know, next crop will be actually you no know, much incidence can be reduced in the next season crop. The next pest which we are discussing is ash weevil. Again, you no, know, it has got wide host range, Milosaurus species. So there are a number of species, in fact. Okay, Milosaurus discolor, Milosaurus viridanus. Milosera subfaciatus. The very important characteristic damage these insects cause is actually leaves are cut in U shape. And the eggs are laid in soil and the, the grubs actually feeds on the roots. In case of ragi, whatever the damage caused by the grubs is actually very negligible when they feed on the um, uh, roots. But many in the many other crops like brinjal, where it is considered as a sometime serious pest, the grubs actually damage the roots. As a result, wilting symptom occurs in case of brinjal. Okay, wherever in, in ragi, comparatively it is considered as a the minor pest. So very characteristic damage you can see here, the leaves are cut in U shape. Okay, so yes, or grey wheels they are called. The next pest is ragi root aphid, tetraneura nigri abdominalis. Okay, so many of the aphids are considered as a no, second pest in on the foliage or many other economically important parts. But this pest is actually adapted to root zone and where they where it sucks the you no. Know, sap from the roots and as a result the above ground symptoms in roots you no know, drying or the wilting symptoms and this insect is actually distributed worldwide you can see here wherever these millets are grown like maize rice or many other crop so there also it acts as a pest you can see here so worldwide distribution and so if you look at the identification character of ragi root aphid they are actually yellow or globular you can see here so comparatively thick body okay so they remain in the root zone and sucks the juice. You can see a large number of you know, aphids, nymphs and adults actually accumulated in the root zone and sucking the juice. So infested plants presents withering and usually infestation is restricted to patches. So entire field may not be you know, showing the symptom. In the patches, the symptoms are actually presented. So endemic pest in traditional ragi growing districts of Karnataka. Okay, so mostly you no know, serious uh, at times, okay, in some years, it may occur in no, severe proportions. So if you look at the management of ragi root aphid, so proper soil moisture. So that means maintenance of soil moisture is very much important. If necessary, there is a need of irrigation. So drench with dimethoate, if you find in a serious proportion, you need to go for 
drenching with time with a weight at the rate of 2 ml per liter of water. So, so that needs to be drenched to the root zone so that the incidence can be reduced. So some of the earret pests are gram caterpillar, helicor parmigera, so very problematic pest. So now we have hundreds of host range attacks, morally the economically important crops. So maybe in cotton or pulses, we'll discuss about the, the biology, ecology, and in-depth you know, management strategies. So, but in case of ragi, which is considered as default organic crop, very rarely we resort to application of insecticide. But whenever it occurs in serious proportions, definitely we need to go for application of insecticide or wherever, depending on the economic threshold level, we need to resort to you know, you know, management strategies. Another pest which is generally occurs in South India is the arid caterpillar, Cryptoblevus angusti panella, is a pyramidus. So these two, so very typically you can find here, wherever the decorpa damage is there, they like to remain in the, the panicle and uh, so it will be feeding on the seeds. But you will also find the uh, excreta accumulated, okay, at the base of that panicle. So this also you will find the excreta here in the cryptoblevus. So the larvae found feeding on the grains. Okay, these are the adults of Pinicor parmigera and this is cryptoblevus. Okay. So there are a number of minor pests which I am not going to concentrate at this time. List of sporadic and minor pests which, which includes the roller, marasmia, trephigialis, shoot aphid or leaf aphid, Visteronura citeriae, grasshoppers, of course. Okay, so very common pest. So one of the pests which is actually very common in a few parts of Karnataka is Polymania spinariides, which is wingless grasshopper, which is called a Deccan wingless grasshopper, Hydroglapus nigro repetus, Ragi white stem borer, Saluria infisita, Red Dairy caterpillar, Haloya halvistrega, Oriental, Oriental armyworm, Maitimna separata, which we have discussed in depth about this biology ecology of this insect under the mice. So, of course, is again a polyphagus under the you know, circumstances. Whenever the outbreak occurs in the some years, it attacks number of cereals and you know, many crops, like here in this case, you see the ragi is completely defoliated. Okay, so we'll not you know, discuss about these pests. So probably so they occur in very you know, rare proportions. So if you look at the integrated pest management, so like any other crop, so if you typically follow some of the agronomic practices, the incidence will be reduced. Some of the cultural practices are sanitation. The, field should be you now completely weed free because many of the you know, insects you now breed on many of the you know, grasses, poesia, plants as a result of that. Okay, they may shift to you now the ragi in the cropping season and become problematic. So tillage, of course, after the completion of the season and then before the start of sowing, the land has to be you now cultivated so that the, whatever the exposed the stages, larvae or the pupae, you know, get exposed to high temperature or the birds and they may be killed. Intercropping of, of course, you no know, microclimate actually changes as a result, the pest incidence is reduced. Okay. Weed control, as I was telling, okay, so many of the insects actually you know, get also you know, breed on many of these weeds and as a result, so complete sanitation should be maintained. And the ant collection and destruction of insect stages. So many of the times you can easily find those stages, like for example, airy caterpillars. So, or helicor parmiger on the ear heads. So, you can be, you no, know, you can collect and destroy. And many times you need not to go for you no know, insecticidal application. Some of the mechanical strategies are setting, setting up of light traps. So, many of the moth pests are attracted. Thermon trap for helicor parmigera, okay, especially during the flowering and grain hardening stage. Fish meal trap is for you no know, shoot fly, which I have discussed in case of sorghum as well as mice, similar way in the early stage of the crop. Chemical method, so treat the seeds with thiamethoxam or imidacloprid that reduces the incidence of both you know, shoot fly, stem borer, as well as many of the second pests in the early stage of the crop. In the arid stage, so especially liquorpa or the cryptoblades may occur during that time. If, if it occurs in the serious proportion, then only we can think of you no know, insecticidal application. Otherwise, so ragi very rarely requires insecticidal application. Okay, cypermethrin, 0.5 ml per liter of water, or melathion dusting. Okay, dusting is a common practice during the irate stage in, in many millets. Okay, so that can be done. So we'll end the class with few questions. Diapassing stage of sesame inference. What is the worst range of 
okay tetranevral nuclei abdominalis this is a fit quest what is the worst range of ash baby nilocera species okay so thank you thank you very much if there are any question you can post below or you can email me as well so thank you thank you very much